Right, what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So we had yet another Remain Biased panel on the BBC Question Time show last night. It featured one sole Brexiteer against five Ramonas, including the host Fiona Bruce. The panel consisted of Tory MP Vicky Ford, Labour MP Lewis Haig, co-leader of the Green Party Sean Berry, broadcaster and founder of money-saving expert Martin Lewis, and the sole Brexiteer and journalist for online political website Guido Fawkes, Tom Harewood. Now the topics ranged from Brexit to Anne Widdicombe's speech, the Brexit party turning their backs on the EU lullaby and Commissar Corbynov. So let's check out the first clip as there's quite a lot to get through. Let's take another question now from Nicola Porter. Was the behaviour of the Brexit M MEPs in the European Parliament this week cheerfully defiant or childish and disrespectful? So, so the Brexit MEPs uh, turned their back, didn't they, while the anthem, the EU anthem, Ode to Joy, was, was being played. And Nigel Farage said the party were being cheerfully defiant, and Labour MPs said they were being childish and disrespectful. Uh, what's your view on that, Tom? Well, there were two stunts, weren't there? The Liberal Democrats turned up with T-shirts with swear words on them, and the Brexit party... We can say that word at this time of night. We can say bollocks. Well, oh, great can, fun. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's not the first time it's been said on Question Time, I'm going to tell you. So don't get right, too excited. Right. How many times can we say it? <laughs> <laughs> Steady. Right, so the Lib Dems turn up in bright yellow garish T-shirts, um, disobeying the dress code of any normal parliament in the world, um, and, and, and make their protest that way. The Brexit party turn their backs to an anthem that the United Kingdom actually opted out of in the Lisbon Treaty. One of the reasons why the European Constitution was defeated in France and in the Netherlands and right across Europe and it was repackaged as the Lisbon Treaty and Forster anyway in true democratic EU style is because it included all these attributes and trappings of nationhood, a flag, an anthem, presidents. It's quite right to turn your back on that. That's one of the main reasons why... Do you think they could have made their protest in, in perhaps a slightly different way? I don't know what's more dignified than turning up quietly, not making any noise, not being like that man with a silly hat on that stands outside Parliament and shouting at people on the news, not making any sort of um, big uh, display like that, but quietly turning your back to an anthem of a pretend country that's trying to assert itself as a global player, <laughs> that's trying to federalise, that's centralising power, that's taking power away from national governments, taking money away from national governments, only to aggrandise itself with stretch limos for Jean-Claude Juncker, with embassies around the world. World, it's quite right to turn your back to this farce. It's a total and utter farce. A lot of people applauding. A lot of people sitting on their hands. Uh, I'll just point out. Um, More people applauding, though, right? Uh, I'm not no. so About sure. I'm not so sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Vicky, as a former MEP, what was your view? And what do you think the reaction so would have been? So I think people then? voted to leave the EU. And we need to leave the EU. By the 31st of October. We know. And that much? We know. And but what do you make of, of, and of the if MEPs? people like Louise had voted how I have done, even but though I a was minute. a no, Remainer, Vicky, we would have This isn't remotely the no, question. This is important. The quest, no, it, it's this important, is, but it's not the question, I'm afraid. Important. That's, that's the principle of... No, Vicky, that is the principle okay. of question time. So those, was the behaviour of the Brexit MEPs cheerfully defined or childish so, and disrespectful? So those MEPs shouldn't be there. I think that's an important point. You know, we shouldn't have had to have the European elections, and I feel that frustration myself. I, I absolutely understand that. But we are leaving... And when you're leaving, I don't think it's necessary to wind up the people that you're leaving even more. And I wouldn't have done that myself. I might just have not been in the room. But just an unnecessarily winding up just feels rude. We're leaving anyway. I'm there with them. So you heard the first question was regarding the Brexit party refusing to honour the EU lullaby, as I said earlier. Tom rightly points out that the Lib Dems had walked in there wearing the luminous yellow tops saying bollocks to Brexit, like the complete undemocratic fuck pigs they are. Any sane person expects nothing less from these communist spunk trumpets, though, because they think bollocks to British citizens, let alone Brexit. They would rather be a European, in my opinion, which no one is stopping them. They can move to a European country if they want citizenship there. I'm sure these losers can put up with the undemocratic processes that come with the EU state, like the Lib Dems. Labour if they feel it. The Brexiteer absolutely destroys the narrative of disrespect being used to smear the Brexit party for turning their backs. 
It seems the whole UK and other EU nations rejected the idea of an EU anthem before the Lisbon Treaty was even a thing. It's amazing how no news organisation is saying that because it would destroy their attempts to smear the Brexit party. Turning their backs is the right thing to do, if the UK itself had rejected that anthem already. He points out that the EU constitution was rejected everywhere and repackaged into the Lisbon Treaty and forced through in true EU style. I bet these Ramonas are hating him right now. Tom is absolutely destroying the media narrative and justifying the Brexit party's actions, as one the whole EU once supported by rejecting the EU state's attempts at legitimacy. The audience clearly agrees, but the Ramonian panel fails to see that because it's not what they want, so it can't be true. Fiona has to belittle the audience's response, saying a lot of people are sitting on their hands. No, that's one of the loudest applauses I've ever heard on Question Time. What a dirty lying cum bucket you are. Now the Tory MP attempts to make the point that if we had left the EU in March, none of this would be needed, and that is Labour's fault. Which is true to some extent, but we cannot forget the Tories also caused this shit show, so they have to take responsibility as well. Now let's continue. Long dark hair. I find it quite ironic how Nigel Farage says it's a disgrace that a nation state is imposing this flag and an anthem on them. But that's exactly what the British Empire did on many countries. Yeah, that was bad. That yeah. was bad. That yeah, was bad. Right, the that's EU happened. is also bad. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, maybe not, but whatever, <laughs> that's your opinion, isn't it? The man at the back there in the white T-shirt. Can we get um, on with Brexit? Can, can we trust Boris to do it? Because let's face it, he's going to get in. Uh, that's what every statistic says. Do you think that we can trust Boris with Brexit to get it on and give the country the closure it needs? OK, well, that is a big question. I might just for the moment stick with the question that we were asked uh, originally, if, if that's all right. Uh, Sean? I think, I mean, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the Brexit party's stunts, because I think that's what they're there to do. They're there to, to cause disruption, to cause... Uh, offence as much as they possibly can. Look at the speech, the horrible speech that Anne Widdicombe gave today. Mm. Um, but I think it's embarrassing to the MP, MEPs who were there. You're to referring to the speech you made about, about yeah, the, I think all of this slaves is, throwing yeah. off chains and it, yeah, drawing comparison. Very, very and offensive. Um, and I think, you know, these, these stunts, that we should be focusing on what they're not doing, which is their jobs. It's embarrassing to the MEPs, like the seven Green MEPs, who are there now joining committees, turning up to things to get things done. Did you know that Nigel Farage, in the last European Parliament term, turned up to one of the 42 fisheries meetings that he was yeah. down to do. Sure. The Green MEPs are going to be working there. Um, and I think it's really important that we pay attention to what they don't do. And look at the um, Parliament today. They did exactly what the UKIP MEPs have been doing for a very long time, the Brexit MEPs. They turned up, they collected their money, and they went off to the pub. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if they did go off the pub. I the woman there in the, in the blue. It is childish for them to all have stood up and turned around. If I did that to the national anthem, I'd be a traitor to my country. Mm. Um, although, you know, people say, you know, the European Union, it's bad. For the time being, we're in it. For the time being, we need to respect every other member state. And by alienating the member states, exactly like what happened during Brexit, the Remain side started to alienate the Leave yeah. side, the Leave start started yeah. to alienate the Remain side, and then what do we have? We have people who are against each other, we have friendships, families being yeah. torn apart. Exactly. I remember my own family, on the day that we got the results of, me and my brother, uh, we found out that our parents had voted Leave, and we were like, what the hell have you done? You've absolutely screwed us. And in all honesty, that's our family. We shouldn't be... We shouldn't be there to be at war with our family. We shouldn't be there to be at war with our allies, because at the end of the day, when all doors are shut, if we do go into another world war and we've alienated all these member states, it's going to be us versus the world. Since no so, one's going to want to help so, us. Well, we, we're still in NATO. I don't think anyone's suggesting we leave right, NATO. Right, so, so since when did pro-Europeanism become about flag-waving jingoism? That sounded like a Trump rant. That sounded like the US, where people um, shout down at, I don't know, African-American athletes for taking a knee to the national anthem. Taking protests against national anthems is fine when you don't recognise the legitimacy of that nation, and it is trying to become a nation. Well, That's the point. Hold on, hold on. That's hold on, you're, you're just a little bit rude. It didn't sound like a Trump ramp. It sounded like someone who didn't want our political classes to alienate. Whether you're a Brexiteer yeah. or a Remainer, I don't see the other European Union countries as an enemy, and I hope we won't no, see that. No, no, that's 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 so, no, no, no. So, no, no, no. So, my view is, whatever you think, 
These are our neighbouring countries who we want to get on with, and I understand the frustration of the Brexit MPs because they've been elected to represent a constituency who are deeply frustrated, but I thought it was childish, as with the Lib Dem bollocks on the T-shirts, childish. I want better from all of our politicians. Mm. Louise. And then I'll come to more of you in the Louise. Well, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. It was an incredibly childish act, and it, and it is acts like that and the speech that Anne Widdecombe gave today that have pushed people away, that have hollowed out any room for, for consensus and has forced people to take very extreme views, quite frankly, and is why Brexit has taken so long to resolve. It's why we've not been able to reach a deal that has worked across Parliament. Um, and and this, this woman is right. You know, politicians should be working to reach out to, um, to form consensus and to reach compromise, and it feels like everything is being pulled apart, everything is getting harder to do. So the idea that Brexit could be resolved by Boris Johnson, I think, is, is quite unlikely. The, uh, the only possible way that that can happen is crashing out on a no deal on the 31st of October, which would be absolutely damaging to our economy, to our security, to our manufacturing industry, and to our future as a, as a society. The reason why okay. Brexit has to very briefly, really long long the reason why Brexit hasn't happened is because Parliament looks like this panel. There are four of you who voted Remain and just me who voted Leave, and that's about There's the There's only one so. person in this panel who is campaigning to Remain, I'd just like to point uh, out, right, which is Sean. But I think what we've discovered about the last three years is that how you voted in the referendum actually matters. And however many times you say that no deal is better than a mad deal, you actually have to mean it. So we hear from this gormless-looking shit weasel who speaks about Nigel Farage's issues with the EU wanting to impose a flag and anthem on the EU nations, while speaking about the British Empire who imposed their flag on the world. But there is a big difference between the British and the British Empire and the EU. Britain was, and still is, a nation with a national flag and a national anthem to impose on those we ruled back then. The EU will never be a legitimate nation, so can never be compared to us. Why do young people even speak when they lack the basic common sense required for adult conversation? The Brexiteers should have done much better at destroying her argument in my opinion. Saying the EU is bad is not enough because it allows her to say that's your opinion, when I'm sure he could list multiple reasons that would prove the EU is fundamentally corrupt and therefore bad. Now next up from the panel was Sean Berry, who is right, the Brexit party is put there to put a spanner in the works, but her calling and speech offensive is ridiculous. There is nothing offensive about calling out the corrupt and tyrannical EU superstate. Anne took part in the leadership election that her speech was about, so she would know if it was undemocratic. The Green Party wants to ignore the 2016 referendum, so the EU's undemocratic procedures would suit them down to the ground, and also the Lib Dems. We want democracy. We don't want their undemocratic processes. It's pretty simple. Her complaint about turning up and going to the pub is stupid. The Brexit Party MEPs have already said they have no power to do anything there, and we already knew this previously. The EU Parliament is not democratic, it's the illusion of democracy, and we won't be there long, so let them go to the pub. At least they want to hold up the will of the British people, it's more than the Green Party want to do. We then hear from another Ramonian woman, and what a state it is, who loves the EU and thinks ignoring the EU song is the same as disrespecting a country's national anthem. The EU is not and will never be a country, I'm sick of saying it now. How many times do these simpletons really need to be told? I mean, I would call out the Brexit party myself if they disrespected a nation's anthem. The EU is not a nation, so I would never honour it, nor their flag, or anything else. I honoured the individual nations of Europe. Nothing the Brexit party did was against the people of Europe or their respective countries. She continues by discussing her family feud over Brexit votes. Now, if you're going to argue with your own family over a political decision, then you're an idiot. People can think what they like. You don't need to attack them for having a different opinion to you. I bet this dopey bitch went full out activist against her parents, probably called them racist, bigots and all the other words that they like to use. Because that's what uni and college kids do these days. She thinks the Brexit party not honouring the EU lullaby is going to stop the EU nations honouring the NATO alliance, or just the basic fact that we're allies regardless of Brexit. Oh my days, what is this woman even on about? She has no idea what she's talking about. She pulls everything straight out of her ass. Of course, the Ramonas on the panel agreed with this demented seal. Louise thinks we should reach out for compromise. No, we should just leave and then make a deal. We don't need a deal first. 
The EU needs a deal to keep it afloat from what I can tell though. Finally, the Brexiteer points out the clear Remain bias on this panel. Fiona tries to argue it's not, but he points out no matter what people say now, they voted Remain, and we see with Theresa the EU appeaser, Remainers won't do Brexit, so cannot be called Brexiteers. They have to earn that title, and most of them can't because they are Remain through and through. Let's move on now to Commissar Korbanov and his piss-poor leadership of the Labour Party. John, where, where about are you? Is that what was, what was behind your question, Labour's position on Brexit? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no definition or a de definitive um, method of getting Brexit over the line. No. And it's clear, even within the Tory party, that there will be a general election, come what may. And he looks like, Boris Johnson looks like, he's been selected for the man to defeat Jeremy Corbyn. Mm. So... As an inherent Labour supporter, as somebody who doesn't see and identify with Jeremy Corbyn as a leader, but as an important politician, we need somebody with the cream that can come up and head-to-head -head Boris and defeat him. Because he wasn't your first choice either, Louis, was he? Because you backed Owen Smith in 2016. C can I just ask, since you're here, mm. um, there were reports in, in, in a newspaper, in the Times newspaper, with senior civil servants questioning Jeremy Corbyn's mm. uh, fitness around the country, and, and Labour kicked back very strongly against mm. that. There are also other reports that he had had a mini-stroke. I just wondered if you could enlighten us as to whether that's true uh, no, or not. No, I mean, look, our civil service is, is one of the best, uh, most impartial in, in the world, but it, is, it was horrifying uh, to read uh, the, the allegation that senior civil servants could have been briefing um, baseless allegations uh, to the media um, about Jeremy Corbyn. I, uh, I was with him yesterday. He is fit and well. Um, and the only people that should be making those judgments and choosing who our next Prime Minister is and choosing who is the best person to beat Boris Johnson are you, the British public. And you will be faced with that choice at the next general election. You will be chased with, faced with two competing visions. One, Boris Johnson, who, as I mentioned earlier, is a known liar who has twisted and turned on every public policy position going, who takes advice um, from far-right uh, white supremacists associated with Trump's White House, um, and Jeremy Corbyn, who is about that. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think when you get a reaction like that? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm not 100% I'm not sure what... Um, Steve Bannon is known to have been associated with, um, with Boris Johnson. He is known to have advised him. That is absolutely without... I don't know what you're shaking Bullocks. your head at, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's not go overboard with that word. Total... Total they, had one me they had one meeting ever. Why when, would you when meet he with was, Steve Bannon? Because he was the foreign secretary and Steve Bannon was in the White House as the chief advisor to the, pres as advisor of the, to the president of the United States. That's when they met. And then Steve Bannon comes over to uh, the UK, I think, two years and ago. And said he went back and, and forward on Boris Johnson's narrative. No, he didn't. That was actually a mistranscribed, mistranscribing oh. by a Guardian journalist. If you, if you listen to the audio in that clip, he's saying they went back and forth over text trying to organise a meeting, a meeting that never happened. This is Steve Bannon who tries to meet with every politician and a lot of them turn him down these days and for good reason. Boris didn't. Okay. He did. Um, he did, he did uh, meet him in this country. You know, I think let's... I mean... Oh. Let's. So we hear from Labour voters saying they can't support the Commissar and the fact that Corbyn won't be able to beat Boris in a general election, which I don't think he will either. I don't actually think anyone in the Labour Party looks or sounds like a Prime Minister. Now, of course, the communist spunk trumpet Louise cannot hide her Boris and Trump derangement syndrome, accusing him of taking advice from Steve Bannon, which has been debunked many times, including by me, but the audience once again shows their displeasure with this idiot and what she says before the Brexiteer rightly puts her in her place with some cold hard facts. These Labour MPs continually claim Boris and this Steve Bannon guy speak and work together, which is bollocks. We know it's bollocks. The left just spout off lies with buzzword filled statements to grab the attention of viewers and sway their opinion. Fiona Bruce should be shutting this down, not letting it go on. She goes on to ask how this Labour bitch feels when people boo her. That's disgraceful. Tell her she's lying. Now Tom rightly points out that there was attempts at meetings made by Steve Bannon but Boris rejected them all. Of course, the whole leftist narrative comes from the anti-Brexit, anti-Boris, anti-Trump shit rag known as The Guardian and the fact that one of its scumbag journalists completely misrepresented what was said in true Guardian fashion. Yes, man, you're frantically waving your hand at me, so let's hear what you've got to say. What, me? How, how, can, how can we have a Prime Minister 
like Jeremy Corbyn, who shows absolutely no respect for the Queen or the armed forces. Mm -hmm. take issue with that. Uh, the man there in the grey T-shirt. Uh, this probably won't be very popular, but I believe that Jeremy Corbyn is the Labour Party. I think he's been an MP for 35 years, and then if you look back at his voting history of what he's done and everything that he, he stands for, he's a decent man, and I think we all need to really give him a chance and not read what's written in the papers. I'm not concerned about his physical fitness, but I am completely concerned about his policy fitness. I'm terrified by the hardest hard left Labour government that I've seen in my lifetime. This week, you know, this week they've announced a policy which would literally take people's homes from them and stop them passing them on to their children. This is a guy who cozies up to Moscow. Do you really trust him with our nuclear deterrent? And it's him and the people around him. And I think we are at a deeply uncertain period in world history. We have the most complicated negotiations of a generation that we have to close and resolve soon. And we need to have a leader who is trusted and competent on the international stage. And that is not Corbyn. So we see that dozy looking soy boy there who thinks Jeremy Corbyn is the Labour Party. He sounds like a true communist during the 20th century with that. Commissar Korbinov has brainwashed this guy into thinking the party is him. What the actual fuck? That is literally the definition of sheeple right there, guys. The Tory MP rightly points out that the Labour Party is so hard left it's scary. They even want to take away people's homes when they die so they can't pass them on to their children. Now that is communism if ever I have heard it before. The whole Labour Party is hard left Communist Party now and it will destroy this country if ever it gets in. in the blue dress. Uh, we have 382 constituencies and of which 270 voted to leave. The majority of their con constituencies voted. Why are the MPs not voting as their people did and why are they not representing their people in Parliament? The man in the yellow t-shirt. The man in the yellow T-shirt. Thank you, yes. Um, I'd like to respond to what Louise said. Uh, she talked earlier about uh, extreme positions on Brexit. I th would you accept that remaining is an extreme position on Brexit? The country had the referendum. The country voted to leave. Not leave with a deal or leave without a deal. That's a separate issue. But we voted to leave. Therefore, parliamentarians taking up a position of remain is totally extreme. It's just de defying the people. It's completely outrageous. <laughs> and... We've got about 30 seconds left. You're out of time and that's exactly why we voted to trigger Article 50, and that's exactly why I voted for several forms of Brexit in the last three years. I voted for our deal, I voted for a Norwegian-type deal, but it's not been possible to deliver a deal that gets through this Parliament. So the most likely outcome, I believe, is no deal on the 31st of October. And I stood on a manifesto that clearly ruled out no deal in 2017 and ruled out voting for a deal that wouldn't protect jobs, workers' rights and environmental standards, and that's why I believe the best thing to do would be if you want to vote for a no deal and you want to leave on those terms then you need to tell us on, and, and have a, a second vote on the terms of how we leave the European Union. Okay. All there. you need to do, Louise, is vote for the deal. Three times they have blocked they it. Three times. They don't want then that deal. Then we need to get a better deal. But we do need to leave and three times you and the Labour okay. MPs and many of your MPs. Three okay, times. our panel is split, our audience is split, and our time that's a reflection of the country, which is exactly what you are, and our time is up. I'm so sorry, there's so many hands up. Wow. The audience members are not playing games with this panel. The lady rightly points out that most UK constituencies voted to leave the EU. Why are the MPs not doing what the constituents told them to do and get us out of the EU? The guy then goes on to call out the Labour MP's extreme position on Brexit after her remarks about Brexit extremes, obviously talking about the other side. Before rightly pointing out, the country voted to leave irrespective of a deal being done. So any member of parliament that attempts to prevent that by supporting Remain is being undemocratic and ignoring the will of the people. He is spot on, but I would go further in that. Anyone who now wants to remain and will campaign for it 
should be sacked as an MP since they do not accept democracy and therefore can't take part in democracy, obviously. The bin even tries to make the argument for a second vote, but the audience rightly states, we have already told you to leave. This is all you need. Leave on no deal if there is no good deal, which there clearly isn't. The Tory MP's attempts to promote pushing through the May surrender document is rightly shut down by the audience as no one wants that. The public clearly want no deal and they want it now. That's the end of it. I'm, not, I'm going to stop talking about it now as it will go on forever. Well, even with a heavily biased panel, it seems the lone Brexiteer and the general public absolutely destroyed the Ramonian shit weasels and commie spunk trumpets that made up this question time panel. It's not exactly hard though, is it really? So I'm going to end the video there anyway, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. Also consider hitting the notification bell so you get notified when my videos go live. The second daily live stream will be live at about half eight tonight. UK time that is, so if you want to come and chat with me in real time, I'll be there. Obviously it won't be like one of my videos as I'll just be responding to what you guys say in the chat. I would also like to thank the channel's Patreon and Subscribestar supporters for their continued support this month. And thank you all for watching, guys. I will see you all in the next video.